I'll say this, there's no set way mm. to get into where, to where I've gotten. Just be yourself, right? Be a people person because you can't organize events for one and not like people, right? Because imagine you're, I won't even say an introverted person, but you're someone that's not friendly, you know, and you're just standing, talking to this, your girlfriend or your friends, and someone just runs and, runs and jumps on your back, chibi, yeah. or tire, you're gonna be like, are you mad? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. hey, yeah. bro. Even when you don't necessarily feel that way in that yeah, moment. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to the Emeka Wani Show, brought to you by Our House Studios. Here, I'll bring interesting discussions with leading individuals in various fields, discussing their successes, setbacks, and everything in between. I also hope I can bring one or two laughs along the way. Today, I have a special guest. I'm introducing the founder of the Chibiverse, the former head of Metal Hall Foundation, the man who hosts the best parties in the whole of Lagos, the man of the year in 2023, and definitely going to be the same in 2024. Amen. My man, Chibi. Hi, bro. Hi, bro. Let's see. Cheers, 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 cheers. Thanks cheers. for having me here, bro. Cheers, my bro. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming in. Anytime. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing, bro? <laughs> are you, you know, again, with you, I know how... The amount of work I do, the parties, everything, yeah. and the, the the work you're doing, all, all the hustling you're doing to make the pe best parties in Lagos. Yeah. How's that been? Like, how's your day-to-day -day at the moment? How stressful is it? Uh, so I, w I wouldn't say stressful, but um, because um, it's January, right? Yeah. And, like, obviously, I'm not working at the moment. So I'm mentally out of it. Mm. And I'm getting, like, messages, should be, let's do this, let's meet this. Like, right now, even before this started, mm -hmm. I just got a meeting set up for mm -hmm. Monday. Mm -hmm. And it's like... I'd rather not. I'd rather just chill, like, you know, just, you know, let myself be free for a minute. But um, when I was obviously combining, like, both jobs and everything, it was mm. a bit more stressful because, you know, I'm having to give instruction to our work. I'm also having to work. So sometimes it can be, it's the best of both worlds. Sometimes it's stressful. Sometimes it's just calm. Would you say you're you're doing better? Before you even get to, like, your background, because I want to get to know more yeah. about your background, on the audience to know about your background. Yeah. I know I know everything. Um. <laughs> Do you would you say you're better at balancing your time now a bit with um you know life work because I felt before maybe you were again you had a lot of things going on yeah. so you were juggling different things at once. I won't lie, I think I'm worse at it. Yeah, now. worse now. Yeah, because I'm just I'm just mentally I'm just constantly just feeling mentally tired. Mm. So like things that I could get done in five minutes, I procrastinate for like two days. Mm. So I think I'm struggling quite a bit, um, but not like in a bad yeah, way. Yeah. But um, I just feel like. Because I'm just feeling burnt out, so I'm struggling a bit to mm. balance everything. But when once it eases up, I think I'll get back to. I mean, later on in the episode, I think we we'll also discussed like how you you're coping with the the workload yeah. and like you know again doing something at a very high level and at an excellent standard as you're doing. It takes a lot of work, takes a lot of planning. So there have to be like certain coping mechanisms, yeah. and we will talk about that. I think people would want to know though, like your you growing up. Like, how was, how was life growing up? Were you, like, the popular kid growing up as you are now? You know, how was life? How was, you know, at home, your sibling, your sibling, your parents? Like, just give us, like, a, a bit of an insight to uh, how, so was, how I was growing up. So I was definitely not the, I was not the popular kid, was <laughs> definitely. But, um, I mean, I was, how would I put it? Like, the obvious kid. Okay. Obviously, I was round, chubby, <laughs> and yellow. So, like, obviously, everyone, I was, like, everyone noticed me. But yeah. I was just, you know, just there doing my thing, you know. Mm going with the flow, going, going with the crowd in school, just having friends and whatnot. I wasn't, I didn't even want to be the popular kid. Mm -hmm. I just, I hated the spotlight being on me. I hate that so much. I mean, but now things have changed. Um, growing up with my little brother, I just have a little brother, my parents, you know, it's just a nice, small, cozy family, you know, we just do our thing. Were you like the, you know, responsible kid? Because I know oh. first, firstborns, like same here, like I always kind of had to, you know, yeah, set an yeah, example. Yeah. You know, were you, were you always doing things right? Or like, did you get in trouble a lot? So I was, I think I was somewhat, somewhat um, independent from a young age. Okay. Uh, so like now at the age of like five, six, my grandma could send me to like, um, I, like the mile I'm down the road um, to tell me get cold and all sort of stuff mm. she would want to do that for my little brother and like my mom like no no he's still a baby don't send him out <laughs> so like obviously like, yeah being the first one I had to be more, like more mature more independent mm. early enough handle my own stuff you know so yeah you you, you know the joke. I know I know and um, we're going to get we're going to get more into our own like connection as everyone might know by now Chibi and I are cousins yeah. my dad and his mom are siblings so we grew up together I say before like after my parents, he's probably the person in the world I've known. I've known the, the longest. Most, the yeah. longest. So I want to like growing up together. Like 
Are there any memories that you remember, or like about me? Was it just like football, like play, like playing games? Do you know, like, like we spent so much time, time with each other, like yeah. bro, like everything feels like a blur. Like, is it like a blur, bro, right? But I, re- I remember, like, I just remember, like, some days. Uh, N64. All these yeah. first things, like, we stayed up playing Mario Kart, Sega like Gym Cast, yeah. Nintendo. I even just remember randomly sometimes in your yard um, in VI, close to your pops' mm-hmm. office, the one close to Triple mm-hmm. Real. You know, we had like this big, like, the sand field where we used to play football. And there was this, like, small Jeep I had. We yeah. used to just play football in the trees. There was yeah. this swing. Uh, those were the days. It was just. <laughs> It was like we were brothers because Bro, we, yeah, we spent so much we, time with each other. We're literally always together. Yeah. Literally always together. No, those are really, really fun times. Bro. So going before we get to the Chibi verse, I know that's what most of people want to hear about. I know you worked at Metal Hall Foundation. Yeah. We were the former head of Metal Hall Foundation, as I said earlier. Um, like what did you were there any skills or anything like you learned from there that you feel are applicable or like helping you helping your arts today? Um, because you did a great job there and you were in Metal Hall like, for bro, how many years? Like seven, seven, eight, seven, years, eight years. Yeah. So working the, like a regular nine to five and now having a more you know, flexible schedule, would you say what are the differences? What what skills did you say you learned from the I mean, nine to five? I would say particularly being because I wasn't in the foundation throughout my stay mm-hmm. in Metal Hall, I jumped through departments. But um, being in the foundation, it taught me or gave me the ability to shoot my shots mm-hmm. at people. Yeah. You know, like, you know, Obviously, as a foundation head or working in the foundation, you're looking for assistance from people mm-hmm. or the or, or companies or from the government. And you can't afford to be shy or, yeah. you know, being scared that you get turned down. Whoever you ask, if they give you, give you. So I, I learned how to, you know... Like, no, no fear. No fear. Go, like, go for what you want because, like, if you don't, you end up losing. And obviously, if you fail in, yeah. like, achieving those tasks, then... I'll say that's something I, I learned from you because you're always very much, like... You know, there's no if you want to achieve something, right? Yeah. Or if you want to market something or put yourself out there, you have to you have to do it, right? Nobody's going to do it for you. Yeah. So you're very very big on that, and I'll definitely say that's something I I got from you. So when you want some like a party is coming up, like you're it's you're you're doing something, you're doing something well. So why not you know broadcast that to the yeah. world? Let people see what you're doing yeah. without any exactly. inhibition or anything. Even just even thinking of that, I remember in 2020 when I was somewhat taking over. And um, the foundation were doing like these webinars because of COVID, obviously. So, and I was just there thinking, it's sort of like scheduling webinars because I had been doing it like first. My colleague had started it, then she passed it off to me. I'm like, okay, Chibi, how can you kill two birds with one stone? Mm. Take the work off your back, but at the same time, you know, make the same impact. So the foundation kind of taught me that, like, okay, I'm working at Metal. I wanted to make things easier for myself, but at the same time, I wanted to have the same impact. So it's, it's those like skills that I also yeah. carried on. Make things easier for myself, but you know, hit yeah. all the hit the nail on the head. Okay. Okay, Chibs. So yeah. to continue to get to know you, I have some quick fire questions for you. I should. I hope you're ready. Yeah. Okay. This one, I think I already know the answer. <laughs> As a Chelsea fan, who do you dislike more, Arsenal or Man United? Arsenal, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy, your your beef with Arsenal runs deep. Can you like, guys, like, like, why, why? Just uh, so, I mean, Arsenal was like obviously one of the best clubs in the world before. Obviously, they had that deep, like just like Liverpool had, but like, their fans never came to terms with that reality that your club isn't that good anymore. <laughs> it went from being the invisible, um, invincibles to having top four, and top four became like a sense of achievement mm-hmm. for them, and. Year on year on, they'll be like, we're winning the time. They're still talking. It's like, bro, come on. (laughs) All right, so next one. Um, $50 million to never work out again, yes or no? Shit. (laughs) Yes, I'm buying those abs, man. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, okay, this should be a good one. Mr. Chibiverse, okay. Okay. Night in or night out? Man, seeing that I'm out a lot, I'm going to say night in. Night in, okay. Fame or wealth? Wealth, I'm a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Um, so again, this is a more about a relationship one. So as part of one of the most famous couples on social media, what would you say your love language is to give and to receive? Uh, to give is um um act of service. Act of service. Okay. Yeah. Then to receive is like quality time, physical touch. Okay, so can I just touch on that briefly? So okay, why why is the act of service for you to to give to your partner? Uh, so um, it's not even just my partner, but like my friends. People you love. Um, yeah, like you can even tell from time for people that I love and I've always cared about. I love doing things for mm-hmm. them. I don't need an incentive to mm-hmm. like you know do that thing, do that thing. I just knowing that 
doing this will make you happy mm. makes me happy yeah. as well. And for me, um, receiving quality time, just want to be around the people I love. Mm. You know, we don't necessarily have to talk. We can play FIFA. We can watch movies. But that just satisfies mm. me. Love it. Love it. Okay. Oh, you're, you're not wearing now. You're not wearing one of your t-shirts. I was gonna say your favorite tattoo. You could have shown us, but uh, I mean, my favorite tattoo. I have a Rick tattoo here. Okay. But, yeah, How many have, do you have now? I have like five. Jeez. Um. Okay. So, what's something you love to do that people would not expect? Huh. Something very random, maybe that you enjoy doing. I would have said writing, but I think everyone knows I'm a writer. But I've written in minutes. Um. Tough one. Yeah, it's actually tough because I think like a lot of people know me, but I think right now is being alone. You know, I was going to say, I can answer for you. I think, I was going to say, I think the answer is going to be actually just doing nothing and yes. chilling because everyone thinks like, you like to be out all yeah. the time, right? So I think they'll be surprised to know how much of a homebody you can Bro, be. Bro, like right now, like I just love being alone. Yeah, right I was going now. to say, I was going to answer for you. Okay, Nigeria to win the World Cup or Chelsea, Chelsea. win the Champions League? It's Chelsea. Nigeria winning the World Cup. So, to be honest, right, I mean, Nigeria winning the World Cup will, World Cup will give, like, the, you know, players the prestige and everything, the, mm. the citizens. But, like, the country itself, the way it's going to treat the footballers that won it, it's it not going to give them that. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I might as well. I'd rather have my club win it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Nigeria. <laughs> so, this one is a bit of a serious one. So, when was the last time you cried? <sighs> Tough. Oh, yeah, me true, true. I think that was the last yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but I think I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. Did you cry at your engagement? No. No, yeah. no, no, no. I was actually a bit nervous. Yeah. Yeah, but I, don't, I didn't cry. Right, we'll to remember. we'll yeah, touch on that more. It's been a minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. No worries. Nice one. Thanks for the answers. No problem, bro. Man of the year, 2023. <laughs> oh, my God. And working to be man of the year again, 2024, no doubt. Amen. So how does it feel? How, how would you see your life change last year? Because if it felt like, again, knowing you, it felt like you reached a different dimension, I would say, last year. And a lot more favor, a lot more opportunities to crown the hard work you put in. So how would you say things changed for you last year? Man, I would say things changed a lot. Mm. Um, because um, during that festival, let me say, I had to leave my comfort zone and it was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Okay. I remember, you know, just getting worried because obviously nothing, everything can go right. No matter how hard you it plan, works. even if you have one person watch them um, facing each task, you know, everything can go right perfectly. And, you know, sometimes you have little hiccups, this and that. And, you know, it's stress now. But yeah, the Chibiverse, the progress it made last year was really, really humbling. It was beautiful to see because... Um, with the Chibiverse, I haven't been as intentional as I should have been. Obviously, I put in a lot of effort, but I could have put in a lot more, right? And seeing it grow to what it has become is it's a beautiful thing to see. And it's changed my life a whole lot. It's changed my perspective on a lot of things. And, you yeah. know, I'm beginning to see things differently. Not for myself, but, you know, seeing and like planning events, you know, understanding what the people want. Mm. It's it's really opened my eyes to a lot of things. So when would you say like you realized you were you were good at what you were doing? Before you go, because I the first time you started it and I saw you talk about it and I saw like the like you see the glint in your eye and like yeah. I saw like the first like as you started, like me knowing you, I said like I knew that this was his niche. Like I could tell. Yeah. So like I don't know like, when did you realize like, oh damn, like I'm actually like pretty good at this. I think it was 2022. Okay. So the reason why it's, it seems that late is because um, I don't know if it's imposter syndrome or something, but I'm, I don't like to see myself as someone who's made it mm. because of a little success. Mm -hmm. Even till now, I mean, you've called me man of the year. Yeah, but still I still working. Yeah, I still don't feel that way. Mm. I still don't see myself that way. Mm. I still feel like there's a whole lot of work to do mm. I before it. I give myself that title. I love so that. it was 2022, I think. Um, I remember my first moist party in 2021, mm. when we had moved South Socials from the Eunice Bash around there. Mm. I remember seeing the crowd, even the night before your wedding, my, Mikey and I were there and, you know, the crowd wasn't that much, but it was, then it was great. It was fantastic. Even my hard rock party in 2021, November, October, when we had these um, stones and bones from South Africa. Okay. Then, you know, a year later, or let's say six, seven months after, I'm watching videos and I'm seeing the size of the crowd and I'm like, then this was <laughs> this was an achievement. This was successful. But right now, I'm 
I'm experiencing three times of what I had before. Then I started seeing the previous as like not a success. Like, how was I satisfied with this? But it was then it dawned on me like, okay, wow, Chibi, you're yeah. actually good at what you do. You kind of know this thing. Even though I know like a certain amount, like I still feel like there's a lot to learn. But that's when it dawned on me that, yeah. And that's when I now got the business registered. Uh, so I think we touched on it slightly before, but like how stressful you say things are, like or like it is, and like obviously play has now turned to work in the sense where like, you know, yeah. going out, having fun with your friends, having a few drinks, and now it's like work. Like what that changed, what has that been like for you? Wow, it's, 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 it's been something else because... Um, I remember when 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 La 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 and I started this in 2019, it yeah. was just mostly fun for me, you know. Friday night to go out and party and be with friends. Even in 2021, 2022 as well. So I used to go out and just drink and party all night. Then, yeah. you know, towards... It's like it becoming more serious and like, you know, having to actually properly plan because I'm the kind of person that... I'm not a structured planner. I don't write notes or you know I just mentally think of it I know this is what I want to do mm -hmm. so as you know as it began to grow bigger I had to become you know things changed change. I had to be more intentional I had to see my seat as a job and not just me going out to drink mm -hmm. and, I was going to say how because I know like even now you stop like when you go out you don't really drink as much anymore because yeah. so it's getting a bit was it stressful or monotonous like having to go out all the time and just always and, drink yeah no. It's even a conversation I had with my friend um, Demala, just telling him, I was like, yeah, Chibi, like, we can't even be drinking that much anymore because this is work. And mm -hmm. then it was, it was, this was our South, and then it was still small scaled. And, you know, it took me a year after to actually fully understand because at times when um, at my events and I'm moving about, my woman is observing, she's looking around, looking for issues as well. And things that I don't see, yeah. she's seeing them. Yeah. And I noticed that. As I stopped, like I eased up on the drinking during the events, at like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I think I'm beginning to notice that I would have I noticed, noticed if before. I was like buzzed. So, you know, it's really, really changed my look on a lot of things. Even going out normally to drink <laughs> and like drink heavy, it's like, nah, Jeez. bro, I've done enough of this. So. so another thing I like to like touch on is like the mental. Like I like to know, again, what makes people who they are or what people feel when they're making big decisions because I think these things can help like yeah. the audience helped myself yeah. as well. So like when you decided to leave your steady nine to five, you are earning like pretty good money, um, you know, structured, safe environment, yeah, yeah. you know, and you decided, you know what, it's time for me to go on my own and focus on this thing I've been building and building very well. So when you made that decision, how, how did you feel? How were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you, you know, was there any, was there any trepidation? Like what was, what were your thoughts? Bro, I was actually nervous as hell. Mm. Because, like you said, a safe environment, um, steady income. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Even if, like, there is a pandemic or there's something that keeps everyone indoors, you know, you're still going to get a salary eventually. But, like, in my line of business, anything can happen and everything stops. So, obviously, I was worried, you know, making that decision because I'm not the kind of person that likes to step out of his comfort zone, or which I finally did with the Afro Festival. So, it gave me the confidence that, okay, Chibuzo, you did this, sure. right? you achieved this and you stepped out of your comfort zone a great deal. So doing that, like leaving my nine to five, I felt like it was time, you know, to, you know, True. sever ties and just follow my passion. Yeah. No, I'm really proud of you. And again, like we always say, like to to achieve great things, you can't do that in your in your comfort zone, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it's a, it's a safe space. You're working with family. Again, you're doing great work, working hard. But when you you found what you're, you're great at okay. and you decided to pursue it, so... Yeah. Um, I always say I'm I'm very proud of you on that. Thanks, bro. Um, so what would you say is the the least favorite thing you enjoy about your job and your most favorite thing you enjoy about what you do? Is um staying up till late night. Okay. Because I struggle with sleeping. <laughs> so even like, you know, for years I struggle. <laughs> yeah. So like when I get home at like 3, 4 a.m., I sleep off. I'm waking up at like 8, 9. And that's it for the end of the day. Till night time is when I sleep again. So if I do now sleep, so like now when I had the 9 to 5, I sleep at like 3 a.m., wake up at like 9. If I don't sleep all that Saturday night, and I have, let's say I don't have four or five hours, my body's struggling, yeah. I hit the gym Sunday morning because um, routine and all that, then all that fatigue, physical and mental, carries on to Monday. So it was, it was yeah, it was so, a chore. So what was, what, what, do you, what do you say you enjoy the most? It's the people, bro. Like, 
Um, I'm not even trying to wash you guys, but like the people of the Chibiverse, I think they're like the most amazing people ever because the amount of friends, you know, brothers, sisters, family I have made through the Chibiverse, I would never have, you know, thought it would be possible. Because, yeah, the people of Chibiverse, they're, they're the most amazing people ever. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, your parties are always a vibe. No, you know, f- all these no fronting. Everyone's just there to have like a damn yeah, good time. Yeah, that's what I love. That's and what um, I love. just like, yeah, just great parties, man. So I think before, like on this segment, I want to also touch on, you know, improving to young people now watching you, yeah. watching what you're doing. Again, this is, this is not just for us, it's for the people, um, mm-hmm. the audience as well. So if there, there's a young chibi, like a male or female, trying to get into the space, you know, organize parties, you know, maybe it's not even parties, maybe it's, you know, whatever say, it is, yeah. it's festivals, you know, just to, again, improve the mood of people, make people happy, you know, um, night is hard. So what you do, you actually, you're actually making a difference to people's lives. You might not know that. Yeah. So if there's someone like that wants to become like a, you know, a party host or a festival host or whatever yeah. it is, like, are there, do you think there are any steps they can take or are there any skills they need to, you know, acquire or anything that you think that would help them become, yeah. you know, um, who you are? So um, I'll say this, there's no set way mm. to get into where, to where I've gotten. What I'll tell you is just be yourself, right? Be a people person because you can't organize events for one and not like people, right? Because imagine... You're, I won't even say an introverted person, but you're someone that's not friendly, you know, and you're just standing, talking to this is your girlfriend or your friends, and someone just runs and runs and jumps on your back. Chibi yeah. or Tayo. Are you going to be like, are you mad? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. Ha, hey, yeah. bro. Even when you don't necessarily feel that way in that yeah, moment. Yeah, exactly. You just probably give the person a peck on the cheek. How you doing? Yeah. Let's do shots. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to want to be around people. You need to like people to be in, in this job. And also, I would say that baby steps, just because you're saying these people make it big doesn't mean that you're not going to do it. It takes a while. I have been doing this since 2019. 2020, COVID put us on hold, resumed the year after. And honestly, like I said, I'm not a structured planner. I never saw myself getting here. I'll just do my thing and enjoy life. So just baby steps, plan, you know, do what you need to do, but don't feel the need to rush together. Don't feel the need to fill up a space and um, do um, heavy marketing on social media and have 1,000 people today without having them the next event. You know, build your crowd. Yeah. You know, let's start from somewhere. Yeah, organ- organically. Organically, because if it's not organic, then no one's going to follow you. We're all going to be here today because we saw the post and everyone's talking about it. The following week, everyone else is talking about something else. You've lost that. So just be organic and be yourself. One thing you touched on, I just want to quickly touch on is COVID year. Yeah. How was that? Because you started and you were building something slowly and well in 2019. And then COVID came. Was that a, what, what was that time like for you? Were you worried? Were you, you know, were the opportunities still there? I, I honestly thought it was done. Like I, once it ended, once COVID came, I was like, yeah, I don't see myself getting back into this space. And it's not like, oh, I wanted to get back there. I just thought it was done because mm-hmm. I was dealing with someone before. She had all the resources, the people, you know, and I was supporting. So I just thought, okay, without her, this is not happening again. Can you just tell us like a brief story on how it kicked off again in after COVID? Funny enough, it's still the same person, Lala. Okay. So she was working with Diageo and uh, they were doing act- an activation and they wanted to do it herself. And she's like, Chibi, do you mind hosting this party? And she's like, I'm like, rather, I'm like, okay, I get free drinks, right? Karim, I get paid, right? Okay, even if it's 20K. <laughs> I know why well, I do party for free and everything. So I did I did that. I did it twice. And, you know, Karim and I, like, Chibi. So, turn out wasn't bad. Let's resume this. And we did. And I don't even remember, I don't even remember the, like, one of those nights where we had gotten, like, a bottle of Almeca. Okay. And all of us were beside the bar. Like, everyone at the, at the party was beside the bar. Everywhere I saw it was empty. I still remember tonight. That was like one of my most favorite moments I saw because all of us were intimately in one space, partying and drinking and getting drunk. But like, yeah, I remember that from time to time. I remember that sometimes. So like, yeah. So... um, And then from then, it just went... Just went up. It just kept on doing the thing. Everyone's having a great time. Um, The thing is, a good story or a good time will always sell itself. It always markets itself. I love it. So now, let's talk about relationships. And I had to touch on this because, again, as I mentioned, you are one of like the most, I'll say, public relationships. Uh, yeah. 
Sure. And um, obviously, now you're an engaged man. So congratulations. Thank you, bro. So I want to say, how did you and Naomi meet? And do you know when did you know she was the one? Uh, so I mean, we met in secondary school. Okay. Um, for initially, she was classes with my brother. Although she always lied that I tried to kiss her. But now she's a <laughs> fucking lie. <laughs> I don't remember to be on that show. But um, I think we rekindled um like on social media years after, you know, just just DM hey, hi, this and that, this and that. But um the time we really started talking properly was when we lost a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. Um she's the one that broke the news of his accident and his death to me. And she said she doesn't even know why she did that, but she knew I was close to him. So from then on, you know, we'll talk gradually and all that, and that's like that's literally how we so then when did you realize that, you know what, this, so you started dating yeah. and now you're engaged. So when did you realize that this was the woman that, you know, you wanted to spend the rest of your life with? I know this might, I don't know if it sounds cliche or not, but um, it was a few months after we started dating. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, yeah, I want to be with this woman because, I mean, while it was honeymoon period as well, it was the point in my life where there wasn't like stress. You were really thinking about anything, but just, you know, going to work and trying to build a career. So life was easier then and, you know, she was she also made life easier for me as well. So it was around that time I knew that yeah, this is the one. I definitely want to be with this woman forever. In what ways would you say you guys are similar, and in what ways are you a bit different? Okay, um, so I'll start with the differences. Uh, so initially, the old me used to be very public with himself, okay. with information about himself. Okay. I could could tell anyone I stayed lucky or I went to Del Sul, like any information like. This isn't deep about me. The general public can't know, but she is different. You know, just merely telling someone that she stays there, she's like, okay, why would you say that? Like, that's not your, your information to share. So she was very, she's very personal. She doesn't talk much, which I'm the opposite. Um, I love, like, I used to always love, I love going to places from time to time, you know, being, going to visit people, going to, like, do whatever. She is more introverted, loves no, being yeah. indoors, being in her, on her own space and all that. So, Again, she has like the eyes for aesthetics, you know, making sure things are arranged immediately. I mean, I could um I could leave I could leave something, I could be done cooking or in be in between cooking, I could just leave a little mess that I tend to clean at the end of cooking. She's the opposite. Clean while you're doing the mm -hmm. cooking. And I'm like, why? Because like it's gonna <laughs> get messy. Yeah. But for um similarities, similarities, yeah. I think now me like both of us being homebodies for one, you know, we actually love being with each, mm -hmm. spending time with each other a whole lot, being in each other's spaces. You know, we love like we love to get tattoos as well. Like mm -hmm. we love tats a lot. She has, I think she has a whole lot more than me. Yeah, she is I don't know I think it's that we complete each other. I don't know how to explain it. It's sometimes feel like we're incomplete when we're not, not with together. each other. It, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It so doesn't. I think, because, like, we're completely different people. We just share, like, a very, very, like, very, very few similarities and all that. So I think that's mostly it. I think when you mentioned about how, you know, maybe, like, if, with information and how she's a bit more yeah. private, I think it's something I've noticed, like, as guys, sometimes we, we're just very, you know, we just talk sometimes yeah. and we're, like, very open. We don't care. I don't know if it's a safety thing because maybe we're maybe we're physically stronger than maybe our partners or something. So sometimes we don't really think like, oh, anything can happen. But Actually, they seem to be very, very like protected private, yeah. and private with their information, their whereabouts, you know, even like anything that sent any sensitive information that might go out. While like with with me, for instance, with my wife, I sometimes I'm always like I like boundaries, like I just I just talk and not yeah. even like about anything pers or bad or I shouldn't talk about. It's just like, okay, or oh, I'm here today or you know, you I say? bought I bought this car or something. It's like you don't like. Why do you need to tell people like you know that? Yeah, give it because I, I just keep that information. Yeah, because I remember just like you just made me remember something. I think one time like I posted something immediately. I was driving or so I posted it immediately on my story. It's like why did you do that? You're letting everyone know where you are. But I'm like, okay, but I must be leaving here soon. She says it doesn't matter. When she will post something on like IG, she could post it like two hours after mm -hmm. she's already been there. And like you said, I think it's a safety thing safety for them thing, because yeah. you know. Anyone can just try and target mm. women and all of that. Okay, so when it comes to your relationship, again, as you mentioned, the public nature of it, um, I guess so for me, when I when you guys started your relationship and again, the publicity, I guess as a, in my head, you know, like your older brother, I was always a bit worried for you that, you know, you know, are you leaving yourself open to yeah. certain things, certain, you know, people trying to maybe target you or, yeah. you know, face some backlash or whatever. 
But as I was seeing you guys grow, it's something that obviously works for you, for, works for you guys. So I'm finding out, like, how is it being in a relationship that's in the public eye? Do you guys feel any more, like, any extra pressure? Or do you think it has caused any fights because maybe, you know, there's been some backlash to a post or whatever? Like, what's, what's the dynamic? Well, funny enough, um, there's no pressure being a public couple at all. Um, I try not to think about it too much. Um, although now I would say that, because initially back then I was just Chibi who was just starting off doing parties and it was easier being public. But right now, with the way social media is, is like everyone's waiting for you to fail mm -hmm. and, you know, just do something wrong. So right now it kind of gives me a bit of anxiety because even when I posted um, the tats, I got her name tattooed on my chest. People were still complaining, saying it was this, it was that. It's like, you just can never with the public. So sometimes it just, right now, gives you a bit of anxiety because, you know, you could say something, it could just yeah. be nice. Say, oh, my woman made me breakfast today. Okay, and why are you uh, telling us? This is what she's meant to do, or this and that, so, you know? So it gives, you know, a little So I bit. think that sometimes is my my worry. And why, so maybe like in my relationship, it's a bit more, um, it, it, a bit more private, as you say, but again, there's no right or wrong way. Yeah. Because I think there's there's you've and you've always said this, like if you love someone and you want to express it, why 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 should you exactly. be feel any type of way? Yeah. Well, it just feels that there are some people out there that they always find fault yeah. or that like always are looking for the first like sign sign of a mistake or a misstep, and they're just waiting to pounce. Oh, exactly. So that's what that was my own worry for you. Like I'm like, yeah. doesn't want you to go and mistakenly do something, and that's when or post something. With, yeah, yeah. with your woman, I said even just posting your woman's name on your um your tattoo, your tattoo of, of her had name, comments they'll as have well. a comment on that or talk about anything. So I don't know, but like for you, I know it's definitely been working for you. And you've always said if you love someone, then yeah. like you know, you don't really give a damn what anyone else on the uh, on the outside even thinks. Making that comment, I remember when I started dating Naomi. I think this was 2019 September. Yeah, a few months into it, and you know, obviously I post her pictures, you know, post something or this and that, and so a friend told me. That I should like, you know, tone it down a bit. Like, I'm like, bro, like, why should I? I'm living in the moment at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, 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 then yeah. I'm in love. I'm happy. If you have a new job or you have a new car, you have a new house, wouldn't you celebrate it? Wouldn't you talk about it mm -hmm. often? If Chelsea had, if your favorite club had won the league, would you tone it down a bit? I'm like, no, bro. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm not going to refrain or stop myself from enjoying what I have now. Because a few stupid people can yeah, say who can would say what they want to say. So I since that. I still yeah, I still try to balance it, yeah. even though it can cause a bit of anxiety now because of the silliness of people, I still ensure that you know I do what I need to do. So would you say in terms of like you're being engaged now, how have there been any differences between like being engaged and like when you were dating, or does it just seem like you know yeah. continuation? Or is it different in any way? Yes, I know. The continuation in the sense where our relationship with like relationship is still kind of the same in a way, but the difference is, I always knew that okay, I'm going to get married to this babe, right? But now it's like, God damn, that's my wife. <laughs> yeah, like she's yeah. going to be my wife. So yeah. Sometimes I just go over to her like, we're getting married. You guys, yeah. so that's the difference. It's like it's how would I put it now? You always know you're going to do something. It's like oh, well, you're like, about to get that it's, job. Ha it's happening. Yeah, yeah, you're about to travel. Then it's, it's coming. It's like shit. This thing is really happening. Like so, it's surreal. Um, it's. I think it's changed things a bit slightly, knowing that you know we're actually getting married. It's not. It doesn't mean like oh, there's not more commitment. Mm -hmm. It's just the dynamics have changed. Like we're so much happier that we are actually getting married to each other now. I it's get you, yeah. more I, confirmed. I, I, I get you. Of course, you. Really <laughs> <laughs> I, get really you I get you completely. <laughs> I get you completely. So the, in terms of marriage, like, what are you? Again, it's natural to have a bit of anxiety or like you know like wow, like this is happening, or you know, are you just like excited? Do you have any expectations? Do you have any worries? Bro, let me know if I'm like, I have pushed it at the back of my head. <laughs> you know, you're I had not to trying to lies, man. Because, bro, like, I it's mean, crazy, I was crazy, right? I was like, well, your wedding literally a year ago, right? And I I literally know, like, the entire planning process, mm. the stress. And I'm like, so I have to go mm. through this now. Mm. Me, like, yeah, bro, like, I'm over trying to think of it right now because if I do, with all the work I have, it's just going to just make me shut down yeah. because, yeah, so. But I'm, I, I would say that I'm most certainly looking forward to it. And Naomi has been, um, you know, planning these things, you know, having like cute plans, mm -hmm. picture this, you know, style and everything, which actually makes me excited because, like I said before, she really has the eye for aesthetics. She really likes things to be in a certain way. And me, I'm the opposite, you know, like, 
as long as it looks nice, the vibe is good, I'm with it. Mm. So seeing the plan she has and how she wants things to be, you know, it makes me excited for that day and mm. looking forward to you know, what right. will come. Okay, so before we, we go, there's just a few more things I want to touch on. So I want to touch on our relationship. Obviously, again, we, we said we grew up together. Yeah. Um, so for this is um, for us, but also for other people in the audience. Yeah. I want people that have, you know, maybe siblings or a certain dynamic where there's like maybe like a, an older brother, younger brother, older sister, younger sister, and how maybe sometimes, you know, maybe the older or the younger and how the dynamics can change uh, yeah. over the years. So I just want to touch on that a bit. Um, so I'll say, I want to, I'll say this and I want to hear your thoughts. So I'll say, let's say 2022, 2023, early-ish, was probably the maybe least close we've probably been, I feel, in a sense where maybe we, I mean, we never argued or really fought or whatever, anything, but like I felt there was, we were almost like reestablishing our relationship in a sense where, like growing up, I've always, you know, looked out for you. Yeah. You know, like when maybe you make a mistake, I'm always trying yeah. to like, you know, give advice and yeah. stuff. And again, obviously you two, yeah, like, you know, you you listen or you say you say your thoughts, whatever. But like I was, I felt like as an older brother in quotes, I maybe was as you were getting older now, you know, you're <laughs> 30 plus. <laughs> as you're getting older, guys try to hide. This guy's annoying me because this guy's annoying because I would always laugh at him for being old and he'll be like, be just yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm 99, you're 98. Yeah, yeah, right, you're right behind me. So um I felt like so as you like you were growing in yeah. your space, you're growing in what at your in the office, I was still, you know, looking at you as my like my baby that I grew up with, in a sense where like trying to advise and yeah, like yeah. not not allowing you to make mistakes. And I felt sometimes you two, because of that, maybe you were a bit maybe defensive about certain things because you're yeah, like this guy again is trying to tell me what to do in quotes or whatever. And let me just finish. And, um, as, as I was thinking. Okay, I was thinking. Thinking, yeah. So I, again, I think this is important to talk about because I know there are people in similar dynamics in terms yeah. of like older sibling, younger sibling. And um, so I felt that maybe there were times where there was a bit of friction because of that. I don't know what you think. Uh, so I'll say this. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say friction or this guy is trying to advise me. Yeah. So the thing is, for me, I've always liked advice because even till now, before like, I even do something, I could ask, okay, Naomi, what do you think? Or like now my head of operations at Chippewa is crappy. Yeah. What do you think? Like I'm the, I'm the boss. I could just make my call and like, bro, what do you think? Ah, oh, oh, mm. okay, that makes sense. Fair. So the thing is, I used to be a person that lacked, with the lowest self-esteem and like, my confidence was in the gutter. Do you get? And um, so as I obviously got older, and, you know, I said having things work out for me. I started off as a writer. Yeah. But then again, doing different things. And my confidence was growing gradually. So, you know, it gets to a point where you kind of believe in yourself. That even if you are wrong, you don't, you still don't think you're wrong. Mm. So it wasn't necessarily being defensive, but, you know, standing on business, like mm. they would say. Mm -hmm. You know, just really believing. Okay, Chibi, Jogba is the best record Chester has ever had. Brown nah, man, nah, man. Mm. It, it was it was an Elka. Mm. And I think I'm right. Mm. Even if you give me stats, I'll still tell you. So it wasn't really necessarily like friction or being defensive. Yeah. I just got more confident in my in my thoughts, in my belief. So that was just basically it. Well, but maybe talking also from my own perspective. So do okay. you understand? Like, so as a maybe as an older sibling, again, like you saying growing up, maybe I had to, I remember like growing up, again, a bit personal, but like maybe when you were a bit bigger, when you were younger, yeah. and I always used to have to like defend you and like fight for you when people were maybe like yeah. making jokes and stuff. So again, like I always kind of felt like, even you though it's just like maybe between us, it's like 18 months or something. Yeah. But like I always felt like I had to protect you. So yeah. we got older and now you are a full grown man doing amazingly well. But sometimes I I always still kind of had that, see me that, 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 yeah, that feeling like I want feeling. to just make sure you're okay. So if I see you posting something, no relationship wise, or let's say you're posting something, I feel is like, I'm like, Timmy, like, do you need to post this? And like, you know, that you yeah, see, I think you I know, realized that, that you see, yeah. you're like, you know, like, yeah, I grow man. I'm like, you me, why am I even telling this guy what I, what, what no, you I don't understand? But, the, but I will even say that it's not with just, as, mm. I won't say, it's as your person, mm. I've noticed that. Growing up, like you're that person, you're that person that protects everyone around them. I remember our cousins, but it's so being yeah. like, like even the people that is, the cousins that are older than you, they would always still come to you mm. for advice because 
I mean, I think it's that first something, mm. but also it's just that person you are. You know, you're you naturally protective yeah. all your friends. Even if we're 60, I believe you would always do yeah. that. So it's, I won't say it's necessarily, it's not really a bad well, thing. It just, it's your love language yeah. and it shows that you're always ready to protect yeah. and care for the people that you love. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And I think it's important to have these conversations because, again, I'm sure there's so many people out there that, you know, are siblings, similar ages, friends. Yeah. And like, you know, you, you, you love someone, you want to protect them, but at the same time, you have to, give someone the room to grow and become themselves because you can only really learn from making mistakes yeah, and yeah, trying things, you yeah. know, you can't always. So I love that so much. Um, yeah. Um, so we're going to end on a topic. I like to, a segment I do called redemption. So this is something I do because I want to hear people's yeah. experiences. Again, if you've struggled at something, failed at something and how you bounce back. So redemption is a segment is about failure in the sense where you failed and you bounce back. So whatever it is, it could be maybe an event you planned, it could be a job, it could have been a prior relationship. Just give us an example of something you tried to do, you failed at it, and how you learned from it or you bounced back from it. I think that's something that the audience would like to hear. I mean, I, one, I, I, yeah, I think there are various things. Okay. Uh, something sort of, that stands out to you. Stands out. I think it's work, working okay. in Meadow Hall. Okay. So how would I put this? Initially, when I had joined, I mean, the first year or two, obviously, I was diligence and all of that but go to a point where you know i i stopped being efficient okay. you know i was just chilling mm. uh my own goal was just you know watch shows and everything mm. and you know obviously i wasn't doing my job i was i was being terrible at it so i was basically failing and you know the ceo spoke to me you know gave me like talked to me like what are you doing like mm. this is these are the reviews i'm getting about you yeah and i'm like wow i really i really didn't realize i was being this bad like mm. i sucked so I was given a second opportunity then and, you know, I woke up and that's, you know, that's, things change. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's it because whenever I think, even when I tell my dad sometimes, like, yeah, like even when I talk to the CEO, I'm like, you give people second chances. I'm that kind of person. Mm. I'm not that, I'm scared to give another person another chance. So at the time I failed miserably, but I was given an, another opportunity and no, gratefully no. I'm, I'm here today. Okay. So yeah, we've come to the end of the episode. Um, honestly, it was an amazing conversation yes. with you, bro. And again, as I always say, I'm proud of you. Thanks, bro. Proud of what you're doing. And 2024 is going to be an even better year. Amen. Amen. Nice to my brother. Thanks, bro.